Welcome to another LaTeX tutorial. In this tutorial, we'll be looking at packages, macros, and how to insert graphics. We'll start by looking at packages. Packages are used to load special instructions for the compiler. With a package, you can add features that aren't included in the standard distribution, or you can modify the standard rules for dealing with fonts and document formatting. Most packages that are commonly used come pre-installed with your MCTEC distribution. If you try using a package that has not been pre-installed, a window should automatically pop up asking you if you want to install the package. To use a package, we place the use package command in the preamble of our LaTeX document. For our first example, I've opened up a document with a large amount of text so we can easily see how the package is going to affect our output. This is a two-page document and notice that the margins are very large. I have a lot of white space at the top. At the bottom, under you, we see page number one here, there's a lot of white space down there, and we also have very wide margins on the left and the right. We can use a package to change these settings. There are a variety of packages we could use to adjust our margins, but the first one I'm going to show you is called the full page package. So we want to go to our preamble, that's above the command to begin our document, but after we've defined our document class, and I'm going to type backslash use package, all one word, and then in curly brackets the name of the package, which is full page. If the full page package has been pre-installed with your distribution, then when I compile, it should automatically adjust my document. And we can see here that it did in fact decrease the size of the margins on the left and the right. Still have, I'm going to go to full page view, um, I still have a lot of white space on the top and the bottom. Um, so there's a different package we could use if we wanted to have more control over the top, the bottom, the left, and the right. Instead of using the full page package, I'm going to use the geometry package. So I'll remove that. I'm going to compile again so we can um, see what it's like without using the package. And then backslash use package, and again in curly brackets, geometry. Now we have to specify some additional information. Between the use package and the geometry in curly brackets, we're going to use square brackets and we're going to explicitly define our margin sizes. So I can say top equals one inch, and for inch I'm going to type in, comma, space, bottom equals one inch, and you can adjust this to whatever size you want. You can also use centimeters and in cm instead of inches in. Left equals one in, and right equals one in. So these are standard margin sizes um, for most documents that you would be working on. And let's build our document. Okay, and now we have one inch margins on the left, right, top, and bottom. With the geometry package, the top, bottom, left, and right parameters here measure the distance from the edge of the paper. There's another way we can determine how we want our margins adjusted. We can identify the size of the margin and the size of the paper. So in my square brackets I would type margin equals and then if I want a one inch margin one in comma and then we're going to input the size of my paper. So I have paper width equals 8.5 in, so 8.5 by 11 is a standard size piece of printer paper, comma, and then paper height equals 11 inches. And we can build that, um, and again we see it has the same effect. I'm still getting one inch margins, it's just uh, measuring that space in, from a different reference point. So three different ways to accomplish the same result. 
Now I'm going to open a new document. And I will save it as Tutorial 6. And we'll start in the usual way. And I'm going to use package full page. It's the easiest. And let's enter some text for our document. The set of natural numbers is denoted by, and if you know the special symbol used for the set of natural numbers, it looks like a modified capital letter N. If I just type N, that's not really the symbol. Okay, so now we just have a, a normal capital letter N, but we want that special symbol for the natural numbers, the N with the double bar on the left. Now the standard set of LaTeX commands doesn't include a command for that symbol, but we can load a special package that gives us some additional commands that we can use for some advanced mathematical notation. That package is called the AMS fonts package. So if we go to our preamble and type backslash use package, and in curly brackets, AMS fonts. That's going to allow us to use some additional commands. So instead of just typing that N, I'm going to, in math mode, type backslash mathbb, and then in curly brackets, a capital N. And now, um, if I zoom in closer on that, we can see we have that symbol for the set of natural numbers. Using this package, we can also display the special symbols for the set of integers, the set of real numbers, the set of complex numbers, and many other advanced math symbols. The set of integers is denoted by, and again, math mode, backslash, math BB, in curly brackets, we'll use the capital Z, and end our math mode. Z. Extra line break. There we have it. And let's look at um, the symbol for real numbers as well. That's one that you may use commonly. The set of real numbers is denoted by and we use a capital R there. Next we're going to talk about macros. Macros are used to define your own custom LaTeX commands. This is particularly useful if there's something you know you're going to need to type several different times within a document. Let's say I have the equation y equals x over 3x squared plus x plus 1. And I know I'm going to need to type that several different times. Instead of having to type out all of that notation, I can simply create my own custom command. And I would do that in the preamble. I would type backslash def. This is going to define our own custom command. And I'm going to name my command, you can name it whatever you want, as long as it's not a command that's already being used for something else, backslash eq1 for equation 1. And then in curly brackets, you're going to actually enter the code that you want slash eq1 to represent. So let's do y equals, and then backslash frac, in our numerator x, in our denominator, 3x squared plus x plus 1. And we close our curly bracket. So now whenever I want to type y equals backslash frac and then x in the numerator, 3x squared plus x plus 1 in the denominator, I can simply type backslash eq1. 
Uh, so let's try that. In the body of my document, graph backslash eq1. Now my equation eq1 needs to be in math mode for this to display properly. And let's compile. Okay. And then maybe we want to say identify the asymptotes for the graph of math mode backslash EQ1. So defining your own macros can be a real time saver. You don't have to just do this with math equations either. We could use do this with text if there was uh, some text that I knew I wanted to include several different times within my document. Go back up to my preamble, backslash DEF, and let's call this label axes in curly brackets. I'll type the text remember to include a scale and label your axes. Now wherever I want that text to appear, let's go back down into the body of our document, I simply type backslash label axes. Finally, let's see how to insert graphics using LaTeX. The first thing we need to do is load the graphics package. So go back up into your preamble where you've um, defined any packages that you're using. And in order to use the graphics pass package, we're going to do backslash, use package, and then in curly brackets is graphic X, not S, but X. And then in the body of our document, wherever we want to insert the image, we type backslash include graphics. And then our file name. So you'll need to know um, the name of the image file. And it's very important that you determine the location of the file as well. The compiler will only look for this file in the same directory as the LaTeX file itself. So you need to figure out where have you saved this LaTeX document. Mine is the tutorial6.tech and I have that saved in a folder called LaTeX files. Here's my tutorial6.tech file. So I need to save my images in this exact same folder. And I've already done that. I have two images in here. I've got um, a JPEG image called Algebra and I also have a PNG image called Quad1. Very important that they're located in the same folder as your tech file. So we type the name of the file quad1.png. Now there's only certain types of files you can use um, when you're trying to insert images in LaTeX. You can use PNG files, you can use JPEG files, you can use GIF files or PDF files. Also make sure when you save your image files that there are no spaces in the file name. Okay, so let's build the file and see what that looks like. Okay, and there is my image. Now you can adjust the size of the image very easily if we go back to our include graphics command. In between the include graphics and the curly brackets, we're going to use square brackets. And I'm going to type width equals, and then how wide do I want my image? Let's try 5 inches, so 5 in. Okay, 
now that has increased the size of my image. Let's try another example. Suppose I want to include an image at the beginning of my document. It's backslash include graphics. And this time I'm going to use the file that was called algebra and this one was a JPEG. So algebra.jpg. Okay. Um, if I want to change the size, we saw how we could do that by inserting the square brackets. I'm going to leave it the size it is, but let's say I want my image to be centered on the page. Then we would simply wrap that command with a begin center and end center. and now our image is centered on our page. Now if you didn't want to define the width or the height explicitly, you could also ask to have the image scaled. So in square brackets we could type scale equals and then for example if I wanted this to be 50 percent of its original size I would use 0 0.5 or we could do 25 percent, we could do 75 percent and when I compile then this should um, rescale. So yes, we can see that it is in fact smaller. And we can also change the angle. Let's say for example I want my image rotated 45 degrees. Angle equals 45. So lots of cool things we can do with images. But remember images must be saved as either .png, .jpg, .gif, or .pdf files. That concludes our tutorial on using packages, defining macros, and inserting graphics in LaTeX.